My name is Kyle Jones, and I'm a medical physicist at MD Anderson Cancer Center. The word radiation is, you know, often it, I associate it with irrational fear. Uh, you know, people don't understand the topic, and when we do hear about radiation, it's about atomic bombs, it's about Chernobyl, it's about dirty bombs, and, you know, these things strike fear in our minds. When, in fact, we're exposed to it all the time, we've put radiation to great use in diagnosing and treating disease, and it's really not to be feared when it's used appropriately. You know, just by eating food and things like that, you're ingesting radioactive isotopes. Um, and then, you know, water again. Most water supplies contain very small amounts of radioactivity, which is just leached naturally from the rocks that they run through. Uh, so it's really impossible to avoid uh, this type of exposure. The goal is set to zero picocuries per liter, zero radioactivity because of the currently accepted theory on radiation effects. And that says that any radiation dose, no matter how small, is uh, associated with some risk. Uh, so that's why the, the goal is set at zero. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, we're in fact exposed to you know, fair amounts of radiation every year from a variety of sources, cosmic radiation, uh, terrestrial background radiation. But the goal is set to zero because the currently accepted theory says that less is better. The question is, do the higher levels that were found at these wells pose a significant health risk? Um, and so, you know, if we look at, you know, just how much radioactivity was found in the water, and we compare it, say, to other sources of radioactivity, uh, we could compare it to maybe a few hours in a plane uh, at elevation, where you're exposed to more cosmic radiation. Uh, you know, we can look at it in light of other risks. Right? So if you drove 20 miles to work today, you took a risk that was probably much greater than the risk posed by ingesting very small amounts of radioactivity in water uh, you know, over the course of, of the past year. Is there a logical connection between, the, uh, between an increased rate of cancer and Houston's drinking water? I mean, I think the first thing we have to ask ourselves is, is there an increased rate of cancer in Houston compared to other places or in these communities compared to other places in Houston? And we obviously haven't seen any of these increased rates. Um, so, you know, we can't make any connection at this time. Is it a good investment for the city to invest millions of dollars to remove all the radionuclides from the water supply? Uh, so we get into the, the discussion of cost-benefit. So what is the benefit to removing all of the levels or all of the contaminants? We don't know. There may be a very small benefit. There may be no benefit at all. These are background levels of radiation for which there have been no demonstrated adverse effects. Um, and so it, it doesn't, it would not seem to me to justify the cost uh, to remove all of these. And in fact, you know, if people are still concerned, they can treat their water with reverse osmosis and remove, you know, all the particulates from it. Um, and so that's something they could do on a home level. It, it certainly is safe to drink the water in Houston. I drink it, my coworkers drink it, um, and again, we haven't seen any increased level of cancer incidents or anything that would point to the fact that there is a problem uh, with the Houston water supply.